Hello, everybody. I'm planning to make an RPG battle system, and I figured you want to be along for the ride. Battle systems are something that most indie gamers just crib from whatever they can find rather than making their own, and that's because the, there's a lot of moving pieces, and there's a lot of menus, and you have to figure all that stuff out. Well, I'm going to help you with it. I'm going to go ahead and build one for you. Uh, and you can also just crib mine if you'd like. It's going to be open source. Uh, you can just use it. But uh, I want to teach you how to do it yourself so you can make your own because each battle system is unique. Now, when you're designing a battle system, a lot of people stick to things like, oh, stats, uh, you know, the four elements or six elements. Am I going to work with uh, uh, front row, back row, or front medium and back row? Am I going to have a tactical game where I've got, like, you know, a whole bunch of places you can move? Am I going to have a uh, turn based or real time? Am I going to have. They think about all of these things to try and make the battle system work, but they don't think about the core player flow. And that's a shame because that's what matters. Your battle system is only as good as the player cares. So if the player likes your battle system, it's good. If the player doesn't like your battle system, it's bad. How much effort you put into it, how much complexity you introduce into it, none of that stuff matters. The only thing that matters is whether the player likes it. So with that in mind, it's good to focus on the way that the player will flow through your battle system. Let's start at the beginning with Final Fantasy 1. This is a very simple battle system where you have turn start, and then for each of your four heroes, you choose action, and then all of the actions execute. And that includes enemy actions. They all execute according to speed. So this is a pretty simple flow, right? But Final Fantasy 1 did not have a very engaging battle mechanic. Uh, if you were to go back and play Final Fantasy 1 right now, the two things you would notice are the extraordinarily slow walking speed and the very flat and uninteresting battle system. Later Final Fantasies realized this and immediately switched over to making things a lot more complex. Not only did they introduce a lot more complexity outside of battle to change out your stats and your classes and that sort of stuff, they also introduced the active time battle system where instead of just having each hero and having a turn start, the turns are no longer compartmentalized. Uh, it's just a free-for-all. Whoever is ready to go can go. So there are a lot of timers running. All the players have a timer. All the player characters have a timer. All the monsters have a timer. Everyone's got a timer. Uh, and then it just says, uh, any ready hero choose act and execute. Of course, the monsters go whether you choose an act or not, so you want to choose quick. Active Time Battle introduces a lot of tension because there is a ticking timer, and the longer you spend trying to choose an action, the, uh, the longer you'll get punished by the enemies. They'll get to go again and again, and so there are a lot of things you can do to fuss with this. For example, maybe you have an attack that takes longer before your hero can come around again, you know, a heavy attack that takes forever, or a spell that takes a long time to cast, and they'll cast it on their own in the background, but it'll take a while for them to get it out, and then it'll take a while for them to come back at the end. Another option is you can adjust this part, oh, this part, and you can actually make it take longer to choose action. So while the monsters are ticking away in the background, you're trying to charge up Cyan's sword, or punch in some kind of uh, Street Fighter code, or uh, even just find a spell from a long list of spells. And this all introduces some tension, and it does reward people who are fast and skilled. Uh, and it's not a sort of skill, you know, it's not like a Street Fighter skill where you've got to memorize uh, all the techniques and then, and then have the best possible reflexes. No, it's just a, a matter of remembering where you put the specific items and knowing ahead of time what you want to do the next time someone comes around, and keeping an eye on all the timers, because all of these timers have a physical display. A digital display uh, in the in the in the game world. So all of these timers have to be visualized. That's a UI element, and then you've also got, of course, the choose action element and uh, the ability to switch between them, since it says any rather than each. So there are a couple of UI elements here in the active time battle system, but the important ones are that we have a menu, and we also have a whole bunch of these uh, indicators. Everything on the screen has an indicator. 
So if we were going to build an active time battle system, this is a lot easier for us in terms of not having to package up the turns, not having to carefully moderate who is in each battle at all times, and instead we can just leave it to each individual character and monster to participate as they see fit, and there is no such thing as a prepackaged turn chunk. So we don't have to drop out of one mode and into another mode, we can just keep going. This does make it a lot easier, but unfortunately the active time battle system is not very interesting. Um, it's popular among Final Fantasy games, but nobody else ever adopted it. Indies use it because there are some popular libraries that they can just steal that allow for active time battle, but uh, it's not really very compelling, and I think I'd feel a lot better if they didn't use it. What's another option? Well, let's keep going with Final Fantasy. We've got the Final Fantasy Tactic games, right? And they have this giant grid, and you move around the grid, and you act, and you move, and all that stuff. So why was Final Fantasy Tactics so much more popular than its competitors at, of the time? Why do we remember Final Fantasy Tactics, but we forget the thousands and thousands of totally worthless uh, tactical RPGs? Well, because Final Fantasy Tactics had a turn order system. Now, from the perspective of the battle flow, it's actually very similar to the active time battle. The only difference is that instead of any ready hero, it is just the ready hero. And if you want to, you can like wait, move yourself back down the line. But because you can see so many turns ahead, you can see like 20 people ahead, you can see exactly who gets to go when, and you can adjust exactly where you want to fall in this list by exactly which turn you want to take. And that's really, really powerful. It allows the player to plan ahead dramatically further than you can if you break things up into turns. So Final Fantasy Tactics' greatest advantage was the fact that it didn't use turns. Instead, it just let everyone act in the queue. Now, this is supported by the complexity of the map. If this was a Final Fantasy-style RPG where there were just 18 enemies over there as a blob and you can attack whoever you want, then this wouldn't have mattered very much because the positioning on the map is what really made it matter. You could walk to a place where the enemy couldn't hit you, or you could just dive in just close enough and then strike before the enemy could react. Uh, it was a lot of maneuvering, and the maneuvering makes that, that turn order even more important. So because of that, Final Fantasy Tactics really felt deep, but it also felt very easy uh, to understand, because a new player would be fighting with, say, two heroes and three monsters, and they would say, okay, well, my heroes get to go here, 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 and the monsters get to go here, 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 and I can get a feeling for how this battle is going to flow, and I can instinctively start to prepare my characters to defend or counterattack or move out of position without ever being told that I need to do that. So that's a really powerful way to do things. The problem is that doing a tactical RPG requires a lot of assets. You've got to program and build all of these maps, things like height offsets and line of sight and a whole bunch of other nonsense. It's expensive. I mean, it's not like really expensive, but it's more expensive than I care to do for a tutorial series. So we're going to turn to a more recent uh, RPG, which is called Radiant Historia. This is a DS game which has fantastic battle system, probably the best turn-based battle system I've ever seen, certainly the best one in the past decade. Uh, and Radiant Historia is very, very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics, except that instead of having a map that's 4,000 meters wide, their map is only uh, 3x3 or 4x4, I can't remember which. It's very small, uh, and your characters aren't even on it. Your characters are off to the side. The enemies are on it. And the whole point of this, and then of course I got the turn order listing over here. The whole point of this is that you want to arrange it so that your characters get a lot of turns in a row so that you can unleash combos. And the combos, uh, you know, steadily increase the amount of damage you do. Every attack against a given character in, in sequence does extra, extra damage. But what really made it shine is this battle grid, because you were doing combo attacks, but you wanted to do combo attacks against as many enemies as possible. So what you would do, for example, is you would use like a pushback attack, which would push these guys both back, and you'd hit, you'd hit both of these guys and you push them both back, and then you'd do a push down attack, and you hit all three of these guys, but you push them all down into this block. And then your third attack would be a super high power blast, but can only hit one enemy. Well, that one enemy is in the same block as a whole bunch of other enemies, so they all get hit. And you've just done a three-chain combo that hit basically every enemy 
uh, on the screen. And setting those up was always really rewarding. Radiant Historia never felt boring in the combat situations because it was so fluid and easy. You are always scheming, what's the next What's the next little act I can do? Uh, rather than thinking of, what is my fighter going to do next? You are thinking, how am I going to move these enemies into the right arrangement to hit them perfectly? You are always thinking, what sort of order do I need? What sort of trade-offs can I make? Should I let this enemy just go ahead and hit me a couple of times so that I can get a good combo running? Uh, there's a lot of things you could do. It's very deep. It allows you to plan way far ahead. But... It also was super, super easy to use and very, very fast. Unlike something like Final Fantasy Tactics, you didn't start to feel overwhelmed by the slowness of the battles. One of the biggest parts of this battle sequence is that, uh, unlike Final Fantasy Tactics, you could choose to like wait in Final Fantasy Tactics, but unlike in Final Fantasy Tactics, in Radiant Historia, you could simply switch your turn order. So if you had uh, a thief character who is really, really fast, and you had a mage character who is really, really slow, when your thief's turn came up, you could just say, okay, well, I'll swap with the mage. So now the mage gets to go when the thief was going to go, and the thief gets to go when the mage is going to go. And in that way, you could bolster up your speed and switch out which characters were in the chain at which point. The only restriction was that you couldn't, uh, you couldn't go past yourself. So if you had thief, thief, mage, you couldn't switch here, so you couldn't do this inevitably. You couldn't have, like, the thief couldn't just stay in the back and promote the mage over and over and over, because eventually you get, like, eight thieves in a row. Um, but on the other hand, if you built your thief right, then you, they would be able to uh, do a full sweep of the board, just thief, 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 thief. Uh, and they would have the right techniques to move the enemies in the right way to actually support their own combat. And that worked really, really well. So that's what I'm going to clone. Radiant Historia. If you've never played it, you should go play it. Uh, it's definitely as good as any of the great RPGs of lore. Uh, you know, I would say that it's on par with Final Fantasy VI. Uh, but most people don't know about it because RPGs haven't been popular for a while. This kind of turn-based RPG is, is niche. And that's a little bit unfortunate. But uh, I'm going to clone it for you. And we're going to go ahead and make exactly this sort of system. And we're going to start in the next episode.